Hey guys, welcome back. So in our last two videos we created the Bitrix service and the Bitrix test service. So now we have all the tools needed to trade and to uh, test our trading algorithm. So now it's time to create our trading logic manager. So I already started with creating the manager, creating the uh, sorry, the managers folder, creating the manager. And now uh, we're gonna pass the market and the Bitrix service. But we wanna pass the interface of it so we can pass either the test or, or the real one. So now that we have that, uh, we're gonna also create a local variable for that. And we're gonna need, um, so we're gonna start with creating that. Now we're gonna also need the market. So we need a local variable for market as well. And then uh, we gotta get the current price for the market to start our trading. So we use our Bitrix service, get current price. Um, this is gonna be a price model because both of our, so if we go here, we're gonna import the price model, but if we go to our Bitrix service, the current price returns the price model, but if we remember, it gives you the last bid, our ask, and the average for all of them. Um, I use the average for this one. You can base your algorithm into either the last or the bid or the ask or like do stuff, but this is just a simple algorithm, nothing too special. It's just, as I said, to learn. Uh, it's not that much to really break the markets or anything. It's more for the experience. Um, so then after that, we get a set like our last transaction price. So that one we can just make it a variable that you can pass in. So this is if you're starting, eventually if we wanna make it stateful, we can add a database and get it from the database, get our last transaction and do it. But for now, let's just uh, pass it in. So let's do double. Here, uh, private. After that, we have to do, tell it whether our last time did we buy or did we sell. So how I'm doing this, I, I like having constants at the top because I misspell a lot of stuff. So it's easier to have just the constants. Um, so for this one, let's just say currently planning to buy. So that means last transaction was a sale. Actually, we can just pass it. status we gotta get it here um yeah we can pass it it's just So then we have to get the balance. So basically we have to get the balance or whatever we're doing. So if we're doing the, um, if we're planning to buy, we gotta get the 
balance of the US dollars. If we're planning to sell, we got to get the balance of the altcoins. And the way to get that is, if you remember, the market name has uh, like, U like USD dash something else. Like usually, so you can uh, split it in with the dash and get either the first part of the array or the second part of the array. So as you can see here, I get the planning to buy. And I either get the balance of the base coin or the altcoin. And we gotta get the current balance, which is a double. And then I like to do a current trend. So basically, I should explain the algorithm that I'm planning on using. So if we see the charts for Bitcoin or any altcoin, it goes a little up, then a little down, a little up, a little down, all throughout the day. So there is like a lot of volatility. So basically what my algorithm does is very basic. If it's low, it buys and it sees the trend. If it keeps going up, it doesn't sell. As soon as it, says, it sees that it starts to going down, it sells. And it waits to go down enough that we don't lose money. And then it buys again. And then it tries to sell and so on. So for that, we have to have like the trend of the previous prices. So uh, when we're starting the program, we can't go back in time. So current trend, we have to initialize a list first. So we initialize it here. And then we get the current price, which we already have up here. And then we do last current price, this current price. So we use this one, the last current and current, to make sure that uh, something has changed because you don't want to if nothing has to, if it's a slow moving market and you're checking every second you want you don't want to like empty out your list of just the same transaction because then you're never going to see trends so we want to check that like the trend is going up and down um and so you eliminate the double so that's why we keep the last one and then to start we can't go back in time so we're just going to do a for loop and start with the same price all over again. Um, and as you see, we're passing last bid, ask, and average. Um, so now we gotta kind of like have the brain of it. So it's kind of like our check options. So that's basically what it's gonna be being called all the time. So Um, I'm going to go through it. So we, we get the current price. Then we check that the current price is not zero because that means uh, it's greater than zero because if it's less than zero, it means there was an error in the API. It's, we coded it. And then the current price cannot be the same as the last current price. So that, this is what I was talking about with repeats. So if that's the case, we are going to add the last one to the trend and remove the oldest one. So we always keep the same number. Uh, and then we're gonna check what we're doing. So we, if we're currently buying, we should create a function of create currently, uh, check currently buying to whether or not we should set, uh, buy. Same for sale, planning to buy, planning to sell. Uh, so currently buying means like we place the order and we're just, waiting for it to finish. And currently selling is we place the order and we're waiting for it to finish selling. 
currently planning to buy is like you're checking whether or not you want to buy right now. Same with sell. Last current price equals current price. So we're just updating this one. And then this one, uh, else even if it's the same price, but we have an open order, we should still check currently buying and currently selling because the order can complete. Um, so that takes care of like our brain of the operations. All right, so now let's go in order and just create these functions. Uh, currently buying, currently selling, as I said, they're very simple. So basically we just check uh, whether or not the order is complete. So we just go to Bitrix service, get the order number, which we haven't initialized because we haven't done the buying. So let me just uh, initialize the string. And it's not here, sorry. And uh, we get the order number that we're going to set whenever we do the buying. And if it's complete, we change it to plan to sell. We split the, uh, the market, we get the, the balance, the price we sent. So this is just printing. Um, so the temp transaction plan price is the price that we set it to when we're selling. So, sorry, when we're buying. So this is just literally for us to see in the console. So then uh, we should do the same for currently selling, which is the same but opposite. You change the planning to buy, you get the opposite market, and then you put how much you sold. So now what's next? Planning to buy. So we gotta check different things when you're planning to buy. You're either checking whether the price is good enough. That's the first thing you gotta check. Um, so you gotta check that, uh, so this is a threshold that we said, like based on the commissions and based on basically how the algorithm is doing. That one, I kind of like play with it until I get a number that I like. So this one we just have to set at the top as a constant. And so let's just copy these ones first. So we have the buy threshold, sell threshold. And so basically, if we're going to make enough money, sorry, if we're not going to make enough money, it's too expensive. So let's not sell. Now we have to check the previous trend to see if it passes the buy, buy threshold. So like the consider here is if it's even worth our time trying because if we're gonna lose money, there's no point of selling. Uh, sorry, there's no point of buying. Um, and then we gotta create a function that goes through our list and get the, the trend. So let's let's create those. I'm gonna copy the sell and buy at the same time. They just flip each other. Like, um, so one checks the trend for going down. The other one checks the trend for going up. It's a very simple if statement with a counter. And then we need to buy stuff. So that one just calls our uh, API and sets the order number. It's very simple functions. So it just c calculates the quantity. Uh, you got to take into account commissions. That's why I do 0.99. And then you do the buy. And you pass the price that you want to buy, the market, and the quantity. And this is where we get the order number. And this is when we change everything. Um, we should do the sell stuff, which is basically the same. We just change the variables to match 
selling instead of buying. And eventually if we do a database for something, this is where we would put it. And this is part of like the clean coding. Um, you want to have small functions that are pluggable. You, all of this could have been all in the same uh, function here, but it just looks way cleaner. And if you want to reuse it for something else, you can just use the new, the same function. So it, it just makes the code cleaner. There is no other reason to have them separate, but I like it. So we finish with planning to buy. What's next? Planning to sell. So this one is the same as planning to buy with a small caveat. Um, this one, I don't like risking too much. So as you can see, uh, sorry, this one is we are forcing stuff. We're not there yet. Um, so this one, We check, this is the only addition. So if the coin goes down 5% loss lower than what what we did, although here I have it at 10%, I changed that, so I should probably change this. Um, so basically my thinking is, if it goes down less than 10%, it's probably something crashed or something we should sell and then try to make our money back by the little fluctuations because waiting for it to come back to 10%, it's gonna take a while. So let's just sell, cut our losses and start over, lose some money there and then make that 10% back. Um, this one, so then it goes back to the too cheap to sell, which is equivalent to the too expensive to sell, uh, to buy. And then sell stuff. If you meet the sell threshold that we coded here, this is just basically the counter. And if not, we just haven't gotten there. Like the market is still going up, so we're not selling. So that about covers everything we do. This is a simple algorithm, obviously. Just check so we can test it. Um, so we start the Pinterest tech service. Um, sorry, we gotta go here and do this. So now we're actually doing the trading magic. service we pass service then last transaction this one we will have to set right now let's just do 78 order status let's just grab one of the order statuses so last time we did was planning uh, what is it wrong file what's the planning to sell I was planning to buy, why not? So now we can test it. We should this would change between ah so actually let's do for the for the price, let's just do last price. Uh, so, oh, but it's not here. So let's just go back here and do. So here, when we do last transaction, 
let's just grab the last price so then we don't have to change it for every coin. This is just for testing. Uh, oh, I have it up here already. So let's do current price dot last. So now we can test it and hopefully it'll work. Like that it's not printing. Let's put a breakpoint to see where we are. Oh, we just initialized it. We never called anything. That's why it's not going. So then we have to. If you remember, we had a test vitrix. Uh, the exit. So we have to. Service dot exit was false. Training manager so and now we should do so it doesn't close automatically. Let's do a read line at the end. And to know that we're actually done, let's do a console write. So now we should be able to test it. Here, house, let it run, see what happens. So it is working. And if you see at the end, it stops um, and it tells you. So let's put a breakpoint there. Oh, it's in the test. Vitrix test. So we have here, so let's just put a breakpoint point here so we can see whenever we finish a market. Uh, we should put a value here. So we can see, so you can see we sold and bought uh, 15 times this for this market. Um, the algorithm lost money, so for this one we should probably fine tune it <laughs> and let's continue oh, I put I think that was the last one so let me just restart it oh, I just had to press enter to see the output okay so we finished the first one in this one you can see the algorithm so if we're using DCH the algorithm did really well so maybe that's a coin we might want to use and if we did this one it did also really well so we might want to use that one and it sold and bought a bunch This one as well. So basically, you get the point. Som sometimes it works, some of the other ones it doesn't. So, this one we lost a lot of money, so you should probably not do this one. So, as, as you can see, it's just playing around and everybody doing their own thing. As I said, this is not financial advice. This is a guy on YouTube teaching code. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.